In this video, I'll show you how you can have multiple correct answers in your software simulations. Okay, so here's the situation. I had one of the viewers of my YouTube channel reach out to me and she had a problem. She wanted to have two different click boxes on the same slide in the software simulation that she created. Problem is, she wanted to assign points to both of those click boxes. So if you press one, you get 100% of the correct score. If you press the other, you also get 100% of the correct uh, score. So how do you do that? Well, today I'll show you an example of a way you can get around that limitation. So here's a software simulation that I'm currently working on where I'm teaching people to press the start menu, type in Microsoft Word, and then launch either instance of Microsoft Word that appears in the search window. So here you can launch the app here, but you can also launch it here. Either one of these is a correct answer. Now your instinct might be to select the click box one by one, go to the on success action and down here at the bottom, you can include points in the quiz. So we could say, well, let's add 10 points to this button and 10 points to that button. And the problem is if I click this one here, it's essentially like I'm getting 50% of the right answer because there's 10 points uh, in the total score that I won't be awarded. So how do we do that? Well, in this case here, the solution is relatively simple. What we want to do is provide a feedback caption when they click correctly in these two instances. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uncheck include these in quiz. And uh, in this example, clicking outside of that will be obviously an incorrect answer, but if they click inside will be a correct answer. So either of these two items. So what I want to do, I'm just going to shrink my zoom down so we can see the full screen. And I'm going to create a shape almost like an overlay that will go over top of the entire slide. You can go into the scrap area a little bit here. And I'm just going to use black and we're going to make it about, I don't know, 30% like so. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a caption which will appear roughly in the center of the slide like so. And uh, let's just uh, adjust the corner radius a little bit here. And I'm going to include a message here. And that works. Now, in addition to this, I'm also going to add another rounded rectangle here, roughly. We're going to change the color of that to white. And I'm going to add some text. Continue. So we'll scroll down here and change the color of the text to a dark gray. And I think that works well. So let's just uh, adjust this a little bit here. And what I'll do is we'll make all of these overlay objects centered on the slide here. So I can actually just select them all from here, holding down my shift key, right click and align uh, center is what we want to do in this case here. Now I can select all of these and we can turn them into a group. Let's press control G to group them together. And one last thing I should do, of course, I forgot to do this is we'll select the continue button. We'll use it as a button. And then of course, in the actions, we can include this in the quiz and I can assign 10 points to this. So let's make sure our group is labeled something easy to remember. So we'll say correct feedback. So that's perfect. And the default for this is to not make it visible in output. So it won't be on until we actually click one of our click boxes here. Now, in this case here, we also want to um, have a similar overlay for when the learners get it incorrect as well. 
So let's move this up to the top of my layers in my timeline. And uh, oh, by the way, we should make sure that these objects extend for the rest of the slide as well. So let's just press Control E, which is the keyboard shortcut for that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this and create an exact copy of that grouped object. And we'll also, um, with that object selected, we'll change it to incorrect feedback, first of all, so we don't forget to do that. And we'll make sure that it lines up with of course, the other object here, align center. There we go. So they are both in the same position. Let's hide the correct feedback for a moment and just work with, of course, this one here. Now, the incorrect continue button, I don't want to award any points for that. So we'll uncheck that and we can leave it the same otherwise. The item below it, which is the caption, we now just want to change the message there. So that's incorrect. And the rest of it's fine. You can either, you can click on either the app itself or click on the open command. So we're giving two different messages, very similar in a lot of respects, but that should work fine here. So I'm going to hide these from my slide here. And uh, what I'm going to do is we're going to select our click boxes and essentially have them perform the same function. So on success, we simply want to show our correct feedback. Uh, because we're gonna wait for the learner to press the continue button, we're gonna uncheck the continue playing the project. And of course that should work perfectly fine. Now for these, um, in this example here, we're giving infinite attempts. Let's change that to not infinite attempts. And on the last attempt, or when they've got it wrong, basically, we're going to similarly show the incorrect feedback. And also we're gonna uncheck continue playing the project. So I think this should work well. Let's do a preview and see how this looks. All right, so we're going to need to start the start button here. And of course, now we have the choice between clicking here or clicking here. I'll click here and then we get our message. That's correct. You can click on either the app itself or click on the open command to launch Word. Let's reset this and just run this again. And I'll click the start button here. And this time I'll click way over here. That's incorrect. You can click on either the app itself or click, and of course I could continue with the rest of the software simulation at this point here. But if you go into Project Advanced Interaction, we can see that this particular project, we've got our 10 points for the clicking on the right application, but we also have points for the click box on the earlier slide and click box uh, on the later slide there as well. So this would definitely work. And of course, if you get it wrong, you'll get no points for this. You'll lose out on those 10 points. But if you get it right, you'll get those 10 points, regardless of which click box you press. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.